President Donald Trump will ban police chokeholds in all situations unless an officer's life is in danger. It's the White House's first concrete response to widespread calls for police reform following the death of George Floyd in police custody. Many protesters have called for the disbanding or defunding of police services, but the president has condemned those calls and is taking a far more modest approach. It includes financial incentives for police departments that meet high standards. We need to bring law enforcement and communities closer together, not to drive them apart. Under the executive order I'm signing today, we will prioritize federal grants from the Department of Justice to police departments that seek independent credentialing, certifying that they meet high standards, and in fact, in certain cases, the highest standard. That's where they do the best, on the use of force and de-escalation training. Well, let's cross to Washington now, and our reporter, Colin Campbell, is standing by. Well, good evening to you, Colin. So, put this into perspective for us. What immediate changes will this order bring to U.S. policing? Well, after many calls for the White House to take action, after we saw protests happening across the country, the White House has decided to sign an executive order, putting out one of the fires, or at least several of the fires, that policing and the communities that they police has actually created almost like a conflagration of various issues that the president wants to address. One of the first things that we'll see is various precincts and departments interrogating their use of force and trying to create a higher standard for when police use use of force. That means using any punishing types of holds on suspects or any types of arrest method. Police are going to be looking at those further detail. It also sets up a national registry, or at least strongly suggests that police set up a national registry. So therefore, if a police, a police officer is accused of wrongdoing and is under investigation by one department and then is transferred to another department, typically there hasn't been a way to look at that officer's record. Well, now the president's executive order strongly suggests that a record, a national database is built so a police precinct can look at that officer's record before they hire that police officer. If we look at Derek Chauvin, the former officer who had the knee on the neck of George Floyd. He had several different complaints against him, uh, including this department. And so many people weren't able to look at his record and see his background of misconduct. Another thing that this does is send co-responders with police to answer calls, homelessness, domestic violence issues, and other mental illness issues. These are these co-responders would be specially trained in these areas where police are not. They answer many calls. Police have complained that they have to be educators, psychologists, law enforcement officers, counselors. And they said this job is too overwhelming in the way that it's structured now. And so that's why the president is offering to put co-responders with police officers who are better trained in specific areas to reduce the number of fatalities and problems that police officers are having with the communities that they police. OK, well, Colin, given what you're saying then, is this order likely to placate those protesters who have been out demonstrating against police brutality in the U.S.? It will and it won't. And here's why it's a little bit more complex. A lot of the protesters want to see a fundamental change in policing, not just several changes in police departments, but the way that police respond to calls in general. Are they going to be further militarized? Are they going to look at every problem as adversarial and us versus them? Let's stomp out any type of conflict type of situation. Or are they going to take a more peaceful approach? Let's try to de-escalate uh, situations as much as possible. Let's take Rayshard, uh, for example, Rayshard Brooks, the man who was fatally killed in Atlanta last week. Could police have said, OK, instead of trying to shoot and kill Mr. Brooks, maybe we could walk with him to his daughter's house where he wanted to celebrate her birthday? Or could we draw give him a ride home? These types of scenarios were done in the past, but increasingly they are not done in that way. They're done in a more binary way. It's either you comply or you could die. OK, well, Colin Campbell, Colin Campbell from The Washington updating us on that. Many thanks.